The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7 through 11. Chapter 7. After he had ended all his sayings in the ears of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and at the point of death. And when he heard concerning Jesus, he sent unto him elders of the Jews, asking him that he would come and save his servant. And they, when they came to Jesus, besought him earnestly, saying, He is worthy that thou shouldst do this for him. For he loves our nation, and himself built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof. Wherefore, neither, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under myself soldiers. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned and said unto the multitude that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole. And it came to pass soon afterwards that he went to a city called Nain, and his disciples went with him, and a great multitude. Now when he drew near to the gate of the city, behold, there was carrying out one that was dead, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came nigh, and touched the bier, and the, and the bears stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother, and fear took hold on all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is arisen among us, and God hath visited his people. And this report went forth concerning him in the whole of Judea and all the region round about. And the disciples of John told him of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to the Lord, saying, Art thou he that cometh, or look we for another? And when the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that cometh, or look we for another? In that hour he, he cured many of the diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many that were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered and said unto them, Go and tell John the things which ye have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. The poor have good tidings preached to them, and blessed is he whosoever shall find no occasion to stumble in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out unto the wilderness to behold, a reed shaken with the wind? But what, when ye ought to see, a man clothed in soft arraignment? Behold, they that are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out to see, a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there is none greater than John, yet he that is but little in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people, when they heard the, the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected for themselves the counsel of God, being not baptized of him. Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? They are like unto the children that sit in the marketplace, and call one to another, who say, We piped unto you, and ye did not dance. We wailed, and ye did not weep. For John the Baptist is come eating no bread, nor drinking wine, and ye say, He has a demon. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. And 
wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he entered into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman who was in the city, a sinner, and when she knew that he was sitting at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster cruse of ointment. And standing behind at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee that had bid him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have perceived who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Teacher, say on. A certain lender had two debtors, the one owed five hundred shillings and the other fifty. When they had not wherewith to pay, he forgave them both. Which of them, therefore, will love him most? Simon answered and said, He, I suppose, to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And turning to the woman, he said unto Simon, See thou this woman, I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath wet my feet with her tears, and wiped them with her hair. Thou gavest me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou dost not anoint, but she hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that even forgiveth sins? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Chapter 8 And it came to pass soon afterwards that he went about through cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good tidings of the kingdom of God, and with him the twelve, and certain women, who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, that was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Johanna, the wife of Sholaz, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who ministered unto them of their substance. And when a great multitude came together, and they of every city restored it unto him, he spake by a parable. The sower went forth to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the way. And it was trodden underfoot, and the birds of the heaven devoured it, and other fell on the rock. And as soon as it grew, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And other fell amidst the thorns, and the thorns grew with it, and choked it. And other fell into the good ground, and grew, and brought forth fruit a hundredfold. As he said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him what this parable might be. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God, and those by the wayside are they that have heard. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word from their heart, that they may not believe and be saved. And those on the rock are they who, when they have heard, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among the thorns, these are they that have heard, and as they go on their way, they, they are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. And that in the good ground, these are such as in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, hold it fast, and bring forth fruit with patience. And no man, when he hath light a lamp, cover it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but put it on a stand, that they that enter in may see the light. For nothing is hid that shall not be made manifest, nor anything secret that shall not be known and come to light. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, 
from him shall be taken away even that which he thinks he has. And there came to him his mother and brethren, and they could not come at him for the crowd. And it was told him, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. But he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. Now it came to pass on one of those days that he entered into a boat, himself and his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And he woke and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And being afraid, they marveled, saying one to another, Who then is this, that he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him? And they arrived at the country of the garrisons, which is over against Galilee. And when he was come forth upon the land, there met him a certain man out of the city who had demons. And for a long time he was worn no clothes, and abode not in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he was commanding the unclean spirit to come out from the man. For oftentimes it had seized him, and he was kept under guard, and bound with chains and fetters, and breaking the bands as under, he was driven of the demon into the desert. And Jesus asked him, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, for many demons were entered into him. And they entreated him that he would not command them to depart into the abyss. Now there was there a herd of many swines feeding on the mountain, And they entreated him that he would give them leave to enter into them. And he gave them leave. And the demons came out from the man and entered into the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep into the lake, and there were drowned. And when they that fed them saw that they had come to pass, what had come to pass, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what had come to pass. And they came to see Jesus, and found the man from whom the demons were gone out, sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, at the feet of Jesus, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how he that was possessed with demons was made whole, and all the people of the country of the garrisons round about asked him to depart from them, for they were holden with great fear, and he entered into a boat and returned. But the man from whom the demons were gone out pray him that he might be with them. But he sent him away, saying, Return to thy house, and declare how, how great things God hath done for thee. And he went his way, publishing throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done for him. And as Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there was a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him to come into his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, who had spent her whole living upon physicians and could not be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately the issue of her blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who is it that touched me? And when all denied, Peter said, and they that were with him, Master, the multitudes press thee and crush thee. But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I perceived that power had gone forth from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people for what cause she touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the teacher. But Jesus, hearing it, answered him, Fear not, only believe, and she will be made whole. And when he came to the house, he suffered not any man to enter in with him, save Peter and John and James. 
and the father of the, of the maiden and her mother. And all were weeping and bewailing her. But he said, Weep not, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. But he, taking her by the hand, called, saying, Maiden, arise. And her spirit returned, and she rose up immediately, and he commanded that something be given to her to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no man what had been done. Chapter 9. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them forth to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor wallet, nor bread, nor money, neither have two coats. And into whatsoever house ye enter, there abide, and hence depart. And as many as receive you not, when ye depart from that city, Shake off the dust from your feet for testimony against them. And they departed and went throughout the villages, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done, and he was much perplexed because that it was said by some that John was risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again. And Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this? about whom I hear such things, and he sought to see him. And the apostles, when they were returned, declared unto him what things they had done. And he took them and withdrew apart to a city called Bethsaida. But the multitudes, perceiving it, followed him, and he welcomed them and spake to them of the kingdom of God. And them that had need of healing he cured. And the day began to wear away, and the twelve came and said unto them, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and countries round about, and lodge and get provision, for we are here in a, in a desert place. But he said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy food for all this people. For they were about five thousand men. And he said unto his disciples, Make them sit down in companies about fifty each. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looked up to heaven. He blessed them and brake, and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they ate, and were all filled. And there was taken up that which remained over to them of broken pieces, twelve baskets. And it came to pass, as he was praying apart the disciples were with him, and asked them, saying, Who do the multitude say that I am? And they, they answered, said, John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and others that one of the old prophets is risen again. And he said unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Peter answered, saying, The Christ of God. But he charged them and commanded them to tell this to no man, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. And he said unto them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever would save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose or forfeit his own self? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in his own glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there are some of them that stand here who shall in no wise taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took with him Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment became white and dazzling. And behold, there talked with him two men, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem." Now Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. 
And it came to pass, as they were parting from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. And while he said these things, there came a cloud and, over, and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my Son, my Chosen, hear ye him. And when the voice came, Jesus was found alone. And they held their, their peace and told no man in, in those days any of these things which they had seen. And it came to pass on the next day, when they were come down from the mountain, a great multitude met him. And behold, a man from the multitude cried, saying, Teacher, I beseech thee to look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And behold, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth, and is hardly departed from him, bruising him sorely. And I besought thy disciples to cast it out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring hither thy son. And as he was yet a coming, the demon dashed him down, and tear him grievously. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all astonished at the majesty of God. But while all were marveling at all the things which he did, he said unto his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered up into the hands of men. But they understood not these sayings, and it was concealed from them that they should not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. And there arose a reasoning among them, which of them was the greatest. But when Jesus saw the reasoning of their heart, he took a little child and set him by his side, and said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this little child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For him that is least among you all the same is great." And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out demons in thy name, and we forbade him, because he follow not with us. But Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against you is for you. And it came to pass, when the days were well, well nigh, come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as, was as though he were going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we bid fire to come down from the heavens and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. And as they went on the way, a certain man said unto him, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the heaven have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But he said unto him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but go thou and publish abroad the kingdom of God. And another said also, I will follow thee, Lord, but first suffer me to bid farewell to them that are at my house. But Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Chapter 10. Now after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself was about to come. And he said unto them, The harvest indeed is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send ye forth as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no wallet, nor shoes, and salute no man on the way. And into whatsoever house ye shall enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall turn to you again. And in that same house remain, eating and drinking such things as, as they give. 
for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you. Eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatever, whatsoever city ye shall enter, and they receive you not, go out into the streets thereof, and say, Even the dust from your city that cleaveth to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless know this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh. And I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazan! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and in Sidon in the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, shall Shalt thou be exalted unto heaven? Thou shalt be brought down unto Hades. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that rejecteth you rejecteth me, and he that rejecteth me rejecteth him that sent me. And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us in thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan fallen as lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall in any wise hurt you. Nevertheless, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou didst hide these things from the wise and understanding, and didst reveal them unto babes. Yea, Father, for so it was well-pleasing in thy sight. All things have been delivered unto me of my Father. And no one knoweth who the Son is save the Father, and who the Father is save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son willeth to reveal him. And turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I say unto you that many prophets and kings desired to see the things which ye see, and saw them not, and to hear the things which ye hear, and heard them not. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and made trial of him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly answered, This do, and thou shalt live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus made answer and said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he fell upon the robbers, who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance a certain priest was going down that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And in like manner, a Levite, also when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. And came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on them oil and wine. And he set him on his own beast and brought him to an end, and took care of him. And on the morrow he took out two shillings and gave them to the host, and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, I, when I come back, will repay thee. Which of these three thinkest thou proved neighbor unto him that fell among the robbers? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Now as they went on their way, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. And she came up to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister did leave me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. But the Lord answered and said unto her, 
Martha, Martha, thou art anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, for Mary hath chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Chapter 11 And it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, that when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, even as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive every one that is indebted to us, and bring us not into temptation. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will arise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and he that knocketh it shall be open. And of which of you that is a father shall his son ask a loaf, and he give him a stone, or a fish, and he for a fish give him a serpent, or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And he was casting out a demon that was dumb. And it came to pass, when the demon was gone out, the dumb man spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of the demons, castest he out demons. And others, trying him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. But if Satan also is divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Wherefore shall they be your judges? But if I... By the finger of God cast out demons, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. When the strong man, fully armed, guardeth his own court, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him his whole armor, therein he trusted, and divideth his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. The unclean spirit, when he is gone out of the man, passes through waterless places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will turn back unto my house whence I did come. And when he is come, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man become worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman, out of the multitude, lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the breast which thou did suck. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. And when the multitudes were gathering together unto him, he began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of Jonah. For even as Jonah became a sign unto the Ninevites, who shall also the Son of Man be to this generation? The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation, and shall condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall stand up in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. No man, when he hath lighted a lamp, put it in a cellar, neither under the bushel, but on the stand, 
that they which enter in may see the light. The lamp of the body is thine eye. When thine eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when it is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Look, therefore, whether the light that is in thee be not darkness. If, therefore, thy whole body be full of light, having no part dark, it shall be wholly full of light, as when the lamp, when its bright shining, doth give thee light. Now as he spoke, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, and he went in, and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisees saw it, he marveled that he had not first bathed himself before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now ye, the Pharisees, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. Ye foolish ones, did not he that made the outside make the inside also? But give for alms those things which are within. And behold, all things are clean upon you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and every herb, and pass over justice and the love of God. But these, but these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you love the, the chief seats in the synagogues and the salutations in the marketplaces. Woe unto you, for ye are as the tombs which appear not, and the men that walk over them know it not. And one of the lawyers answered, saying unto him, Teacher, in saying this thou reproach us also. And he said, Woe also unto you, lawyers, for ye load men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So ye are witnesses, and consent unto the works of your fathers, for they killed them, and ye build their tombs. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send unto them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. For the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary, yea, I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye took away the key of knowledge, ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you hindered. And when he had come out from thence, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press upon him vehemently, and to provoke him, to speak of many things, laying wait for him to catch something out of his mouth.